or welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are all doing good in this time. Um, I am really excited about today's video. So today's video is all eco DIYs and zero waste DIYs and I literally have been wanting to do this video for probably like six months to a year. I have been narrowing down which DIYs to do, ones that aren't like too anywhere, ones that you would actually use. So I came up with six and they're all pretty easy. And I think you guys will have this stuff for at least to make at least to make one or two of them. And if not, if you guys are going grocery shopping at Walmart, you could pick some of the stuff up. Um, I also ordered some stuff on Amazon and Etsy actually, because Etsy is small businesses. So that's really good. But yeah. So without further ado, let's get on with the video. Alright guys, so the very first one is, it's literally the reason why I wanted to make this video in the first place. So, reusable makeup pads that are easier than literally probably any video you'll search up about them. This is so easy. You don't have to sew anything, okay? Basically, the reason why I want to make reusable makeup wipes are because I do enjoy having little wipes to take off my eye makeup and my face makeup and everything and the cotton rounds are so convenient but so bad for the environment so I actually bought some reusable makeup wipes back in September so that I've been using for about like well until now and I only bought nine of them because that's all they had in a zero waste store and they were a dollar each so like with tax I spent over ten dollars on nine of them I made like 500 for ten dollars in this DIY so just stay tuned all right guys, so you only need two things for this DIY. The first are microfiber towels. I got these from Winners a couple months ago. You could probably find it in the kitchen section of a grocery store. And then I also had this hair microfiber towel. My mom got me a new one for Christmas this year, so instead of getting rid of it, I thought I could also use it. And then the other thing you'll need, which are really important, are pinking shears. And I got these from Amazon and I'll link them below. And basically what these do is that when you cut the fabric, it won't fray as easily. So I decided to do square makeup wipes because circles would just waste more fabric. And this way I could use pretty much the entire towel. So I counted the lines of the towel to see how many there were. And I decided to make the strips eight lines each if that makes sense and as you can see using the pinking shears really helps because it makes these little triangles zigzags that prevent it from fraying and then that way you don't have to sew so I cut those out and I made six strips total from one piece of towel So then I measured how thick these strips were and they were about 6.5 centimeters. So then I just used a little marker and made dots along the strip at 6.5 centimeters each. So then I took my pinking shears and cut them out. So you can see that the pinking shears really do help with not fraying the fabric and that way you don't have to sew anything. So it really makes a big difference. So for this towel, it has the polka dots and it's a little different. It's not ribbed the same way, so I couldn't count out the steps. So I just wanted to show you how I did it. Basically, I knew I wanted them 6.5 centimeters on the sides. So I just took my tape measure and basically mapped it out and drew little dots on where each corner would be for the little squares. And then as you can see, once I had all these dots, instead of drawing lines to connect them and using more ink on them, I decided to just take my pinking shears and as I was cutting, I would just aim for the next dot. So again, this made about six strips that I could use and then I just cut again at the 6.5 centimeter mark and made a bunch. Okay guys, so this is literally half of that package because it's one towel from each and then I still have double this to cut up. I have it all over here, I'll just show you quick. And so it just made so much, which is really great. It's so cheap. All this was 10 bucks. And like I said, I paid a dollar per one before. And this is just makes so much. Like I'm literally gonna give so many to my friends and family. You guys can totally make this. It's so cheap and it'll last so long and it's so much better for the environment. So I just wanted to show you. Let's see how they work when I take off my makeup. Okay, all it has is makeup remover. 
to do. Take off some eyeshadow. Look at that. And it's so soft. Oh my gosh, it's so soft. That's so nice. It's so exciting. Okay guys, the next one is another one I've been wanting to make for so long. I'm so happy I have them now are wool dryer balls. Just quickly, I want to mention that the benefits of the wool dryer balls are of many. Um, first of all, it is better for the environment, obviously. You're not putting in the reusable, or not the reusable, the disposable um, sheets that have like that chemically on it. Second of all, since like in a dryer, it, the balls are like kind of going everywhere, um, it reduces static and it also is really good for your bed sheets and stuff to really spread out like the heat. It's really great and then also there's like other benefits too that you can look up but very good all right guys so for this diy you are going to need to buy 100 percent wool i actually got this on etsy from a really nice girl a really nice shop and i'll link it below which one i got i got 200 grams of wool and this made about five and a half dryer balls and then the other thing you'll need are some pantyhose i just used these ones because they had a rip in them you don't need to buy new ones just use an old pair and then I also did get these needles because it might not be necessary, but it definitely makes it a lot easier to end the ball off because you kind of pull it through, which you'll see. And then the last thing you'll need is just any type of string that isn't wool because when we felt it, you don't want it to felt together. All right, guys, so take the end piece of the wool and what you're going to do is I wrapped it around three fingers. You can do it how you like and whatever's easier, but basically I wrapped the wool ten times around my three fingers one way and then I slid it off my fingers and then wrapped it again the other way ten more times. Now that you have this little kind of wrapped up thing, you're going to just keep wrapping the wool around it and around it until it gets to about the size of a tennis ball. I made mine a little bit smaller than that just because I wanted more but you can make them as big or small as you want realistically. Alright now that you have your ball to the size you like just cut it from the rest of the wool and what you're gonna do is take these needles that we have and you're gonna put the end of the wool thread through that little eye hole of the needle. I use another needle to help push it through. Once it's through, you're going to take the needle and just poke it through the ball all the way to the other side. Don't worry if it's a little tough, just push it right through. Once the needle is through, pull the thread all the way through the dryer ball and that's really going to secure it and prevent it from unraveling. I decided to do it two times just because I had extra thread and wanted to make it extra secure. Then if you have any extra, just snip it off. And that's that. So like I said, this made about five and a half dryer balls. So now I just cut off one leg from my nylons. And what you're going to do is take one ball at a time and push it all the way through the nylon so it's nice and tight at the end. And then you're going to tie it off with the non-wool string. So remember the string doesn't have to be fancy, just it has to be a different material than wool. Make sure it's really in there good and then I tied it so that I made it a bit thick. So what I mean by that is you can see I went around it a few times so that the next ball really wouldn't touch the first ball. Alright so once you have completed the first one then you're gonna put the rest of the balls inside the nylons making sure to separate them with the string. Now that you have all the balls you can cut off the rest of the nylon and save it for if you want to make more dryer balls another time and then you're going to take this to the dryer. So it took a few washes for me, but make sure you wash it with warm water. I find that that makes a difference in the felting process. Then you're going to take the dryer balls out of the dryer and they're going to look a little fuzzy, which is great. And basically you're going to have to cut the nylon off and really like detach it from the ball. Don't worry if it's really stuck to it. It should be like that. Just take your time and really pull it off. Once you've done that, you have your new dryer balls and you can do laundry so much better now. Let's take a look.
Okay guys, the next one are, so produce bags. Look how cute these are. I gotta say, I really like this. <laughs> so I made a bunch of sizes, which I'll show you in the video, but I just wanna show you quick. Produce bags are awesome. You can use them like this size. I'm gonna be putting my makeup remover wipes in the smaller ones. You can use them for many things. Then obviously the benefits of these are many, like those little tiny plastic bags you get at the grocery store are so wasteful and you don't have to pay for those ones, so a lot of people still use those like often. And these are really great. And then also for your re for your reusable makeup pads, put them in there and throw them in the wash, perfect. All right guys, so for this one, you're just gonna need a curtain. I got this these curtains from Walmart and I just decided since I couldn't thrift them because the thrift stores were already closed that I would just get really cute ones so I got this floral pattern if you're watching this and the thrift stores are open though you can go to the thrift store and get curtains it'll be way cheaper and even more sustainable and then you'll also need some cord so I just got this cord because I thought it was cute colors and it would go with the floral but you can get any color you want okay so just to explain to you guys this is not to scale but the dotted lines are where I'm cutting, um, so I want them to be roughly 20 inches long. Adam's just cooking. <laughs> 20 inches long and about 15 inches across width. So yeah. And then basically on the top and bottom there's a hem, so I'm going to use those to my advantage instead of making my own hem for the cord, and the middle ones will fold. So the dotted lines are where I'm cutting, and the squiggly lines is where I'm going to fold to make the bags. This is not really to scale, but... Technically, they would all be around the same size. So, we're gonna try it. I'll see you in a sec when they're all cut. Okay guys, so I cut out one of the two curtains and it gave me 12 bags. So total is gonna be 24. So you can literally make so many. I'm gonna be giving these to family and friends too. But I just wanna give you an overview of what they were. But basically, for the top and bottom, it had like the raw, the already sewn top for like a rod because it's a curtain. So basically I'm using that because I'm gonna put the cord through there. And also for all of the pieces I cut out, I folded them. So I would have to do one less hem. So this one is folded like this. So the side part, oops, the side part's folded. And then I'm going to be sewing like the bottom to the top and leaving room for the cord. So I hope that makes sense. I'm literally standing on the stool to show you guys. So I basically made the small ones because that's the fabric I had left, but I thought might as well use it. Like I didn't waste any fabric. So yeah, let's get to sewing. All right guys, so start with the simpler one that already had the hem. You just wanna make sure that you are folding it so the inside is on the outside when you're sewing. Then you're gonna wanna pin it in place where you're gonna sew and take it to the sewing machine. And then you also, when you are sewing, are gonna wanna make sure you stop to leave room for the cord. So when I sewed, just make sure you go back and forth to make sure the thread is secure. And then at the corner, I left the needle in the fabric, lifted up the petal and turned it, so that way it wouldn't move too much. Then I set the petal back down and finished off the hem. This is so, so easy. It's definitely easier if you have a sewing machine. You could probably do it without one, but definitely does make a difference with, with a sewing machine. Now, as for the one with no hem, we have to make it. So make sure again that you are working with the inside of the fabric, not the outside. You're gonna take the top of the fabric and fold it inward. You can make this as big or small as you want. When I was making these, I noticed the smaller ones definitely cinched better when you pull the cord together and more space makes it not, but either way it'll work, so just do whatever is good for you. I probably made mine about two centimeters, maybe a centimeter and a half. Once you've pinned it down, you're gonna take it to the sewing machine and hem that first. Again, go back and forth so that your thread is secure. And for this one, I just made sure my petal was like on the edge of the hem so that it was even all the way across. Now that you have your hem, make sure again that you're gonna flip it so that you are gonna be working with the inside. I think it makes sense if you like see it, but now you fold it so that the inside is on the outside again. And now it's the exact same thing as before. You're gonna pin it in place and take it to the sewing machine to sew the two sides. And 
then make sure you stop before you hit the hem so that the cord has room to go through. So here are the bags. What you're going to do now is turn them inside out, which actually makes them outside in or whatever it is, right side in. So now you have the more vibrant colors on the outside and the hem on the inside. So now as you can see, there's the holes still left there for the cord to go through. And then you're just going to take your cord and thread it all the way through. Now this does take a little bit of time and it, you could put the cord in before you sew it to make it a bit easier. Do it however you like. Once the cord is all the way through and the length that you want it, then just cut it off and tie it. Now you have these amazing reusable produce bags and you'll never have to use one of those little plastic bags again. Okay guys, so next I tried to the best of my abilities how to learn how to make these box wraps and if I can do it, you can definitely do it. So they are super easy, this is an, a replacement for saran wrap, um, you basically put this around food or like around bowls, lots of benefits to that, you're not throwing it out, they last up to like a year or two depending on how often you use them. And then also beeswax is like 100% biodegradable, so I'm pretty sure you can compost these. And like, especially if you use 100% cotton, which I use. But anyways, let's get into the DIY. All right, so you need a few more things for this DIY. You're gonna need to get yourself some beeswax. I decided to get pellets instead of the block because everyone said the block is just really hard to shave and it wrecks your grater a little bit. So I just got the already pellet beeswax. And I got a one pound bag and I ordered that off Amazon. So I'll link below which one I got. And then the other main thing that you're going to need is fabric. So I already had this fabric from my Nana when she passed on her sewing machine. She gave me lots of stuff and this was 100% cotton fabric, which is the best to use for beeswax wraps. Next, you're going to need an iron and some parchment paper. All right, so we're going to make square and circle beeswax wraps. For the circle ones, the best thing to do is take bowls that you have at your home that you think you will use beeswax wraps on and you're going to make the beeswax wraps to the scale of your bowls. So I have four possible bowls that I would wrap, so I decided to do the largest one and the third largest one as one color and then the smallest one and the second largest one as another color. So what you're going to do is take your bowl and you're going to trace the circle of it. I used a pencil. You can use a marker if you want. I just tried to use a pencil so that it wouldn't show. But you're going to trace that all the way around. Now you're going to cut around that circle, giving it about an inch or two of space so that it has enough room to fold over your bowl. You can use regular scissors to do this, but since I already had the pinking shears, I decided to use them so that I would reduce the fraying of my beeswax wraps. So as you can see, there's enough room for it to fold over and it's good to go. So here are all the ones that I made. I think that the big squares are about 15 inches by 15 inches, but really you can make these any size you want that works for you. So what you're gonna do is use some sort of pan or cutting board to place your parchment paper on. I recommend taping one piece of parchment paper down just because then there's less movement when you're ironing it and the tape just holds everything in place a bit easier. Next, you're gonna place your piece of fabric on the parchment paper, making sure that the more printed, vibrant side is facing down and the inside is facing up. Next, you're gonna scoop your beeswax pellets onto your fabric. So you can kind of do this how you like. Um, I used about two little spoonfuls for it, for this piece. But really the main thing is that you just wanna make sure all of the pellets or all the shavings are all spread out across the entire piece of fabric, even to the edges. That way you'll get a nice even spread of the beeswax when you iron it on. Once you have all the pellets placed where you want, you're gonna take a second piece of parchment paper and lay it on top. You can also tape this down if you want to help prevent it from moving. As I did more, I didn't tape it as much, but do whatever you like to make it easier for yourself. So all you're gonna do now is take your iron and iron all the beeswax out until it's melted evenly across your piece of fabric. 
This will take a few minutes, but just make sure that you're spreading the liquid all over right to the corners to make sure your entire piece of fabric is covered with beeswax. So once your fabric is cool to the touch, you can peel off that first layer of parchment paper and then peel your fabric off. It won't take too long, you don't want to wait until it's hardened to do it. And then you can hang it on a hanger like I did for a minute, but also you don't want to leave it too long because it could crease. So really you could just hold it and pinch it into your fingers and kind of wave it back and forth until it hardens a bit. Before you move on to your next beeswax wrap, you can also use the excess from your first one. Kind of peel it off the parchment paper and then sprinkle it onto your next one. That way you save some beeswax in terms of like money, but also for the environment because that's what we're doing in this video. Now you have a bunch of awesome beeswax wraps that you can use to wrap your food and cover your bowls and that all use zero plastic. Okay, next is this little guy and it is, I guess it's more of a scrubber than a sponge, you could say, but it is literally a zero waste, 100% biodegradable sponge. And I found this, if this was not my idea, I'm totally gonna give credit to the video I found because I had an environmental education class from Teachers College and we had to make something like out of nature or whatever. So that's when I found this, it was like two months ago. So I have literally made one before and used it for two months. Like this 100% works, it's literally awesome and it's so, so simple. And you can throw it in the compost once it gets like scraggly and it will literally biodegrade 100% in two to three years. Which, if you don't know how long stuff takes to biodegrade, that's pretty good. So, and the secret to this is jute. Let's get into it. All right guys, so you don't need much at all for this DIY. You're just gonna use something that you can macrame on. So I'm using this wooden rod that I already had. And then again, you use jute twine. So jute is spelled J-U-T-E. And basically what this is, is it's actually a vegetable fiber that is spun into a coarse twine that you can buy, like, and then it looks like this. So that's why it's 100% biodegradable because it is actually just vegetable fiber. And I picked this up about two months back from Michael's. So you can get it there or any dollar store or craft store. All right, so you're gonna take your jute twine and you're going to cut out 12 pieces of 80 centimeter pieces of string. So I just took my little measuring tape, put it at 80 centimeters, measured it down to zero, cut that one, and then cut 11 more to make a total of 12 pieces of string. So now you're gonna have to find somewhere where you can hang your rod. So I just use these two handles on two cupboards in my kitchen. And what you do is you're gonna take each piece of twine, you're gonna put the two ends together and go all the way down so that you find the middle. Then you're basically gonna put it up one side of the rod, down the other, and pull the string through. Once you do that for all of them, you're gonna turn it around so that the little loop part is facing you, as you can see. So now, don't worry, you can definitely do this. All we're doing is one type of knot, which is called a square knot. So grab your four first strings on one side, and then the two middle ones you're gonna to keep together. Then you're gonna take the left one first, and you're gonna make a four over it. Then you're gonna take the right one and do an over under movement. So you're going to put it over the end of the left string and then under the two middle strings and pull it through. Then you want to pull it really tight all the way to the top. Now that's only half the square knot to finish it off. You do the exact same thing just with the opposite side. So you'll take your right string first, make the four, take the left string, do the over under, pull it through and tighten it all the way up. That is called a square knot. I have some more tutorials on this on my video that I made a couple years ago doing a macrame wall hanging. You can check it out if you want, but it's very simple to make this. You can definitely do it. So once you have your first square knot, you're gonna make more square knots across the whole top. 
I just wanted to show you again here how to do it so that you can really get it down. All right, now that you have your first row of square knots, you're gonna keep doing square knots, but you're gonna do a little bit of a different thing for each alternating row. So for this row, what you're gonna do is actually take the first two strings and put them to the side. Now you're gonna make a square knot with the next four strings. So basically you have to do this because if you just made square knots all the way down, you would have individual little lines of square knots. But when you do it like this, you are attaching the two strings together to make one piece. So the second row, you're gonna have two extra strings on the left side and the right side. When you get to your third row, now you're gonna do the exact same thing as you did for the first row. So you're gonna take the first four strings again, make your square knots, and do that all the way across. I hope that makes sense, but basically you're just gonna keep doing that all the way down until your desired length. And remember to always alternate the rows so that your entire sponge is attached. Now that you have your whole sponge, you're gonna take the bottom strings and really tighten them. Because it's a square knot, it shouldn't unravel when we cut them, but just make sure you give it one last really tight pull all the way across so that they're good. Then you're just gonna take your scissors and trim off all of the extra string along the bottom. Once you're happy with that, now you're going to slide the sponge off of your rod. You can now unravel those top pieces by just pulling them upward and then you're gonna cut all of those off as well. If you want you can leave one as a little loop so that you can hang your sponge on the sink or you can cut it all the way off but I think it looks cute like that. Then that's it and you have a hundred percent biodegradable sponge. All right guys, and finally, just like a really fun, super easy one. Everyone knows that reusable bags are good for the environment and I picked up a few of these ones. I just wanted to include something that I feel like everyone has access to and can do in some form to make reusable bags a little cuter. Maybe you'll be more likely to use them. All right, let's get into that DIY. All right guys, so I grabbed this little tote bag pack from Walmart in the craft section and basically it gave me three 100% cotton reusable bags. So you can do many things with these. You can paint them, which is what we're gonna be doing in this video. You can add patches to them. You can tie dye them, which I'm gonna be doing in the next few videos, so stay tuned for that. And I will be using this indigo tie dye at some point for a video, which is 100% natural tie dye, so you can really make this super sustainable. But yeah, you can really personalize them however you want, however you want to style them to make it so that you use reusable bags more. Okay guys, so I have, I found this picture on Pinterest, it's not my picture, um, of these like lined lips and I thought they were really cute. So I am going to put them like kind of on the side corner here. So I'm just going to draw them on with a pencil and then I'm going to go over it with this black paint. Um, I'm actually using black paint and too soft from the bands video I did so that it's like a fabric paint. If you want to see how that video goes, I won't explain it now. Um, you can go check that out, but I'm pretty sure you could use any black paint. It doesn't have to be crazy. Fabric paint would obviously be better, but just acrylic paint from the dollar store would work fine if you were just using like a small line painting like me. So let's get into it. Okay, so I think this turned out so cute. I made the lines a bit thicker so you could see it a bit more and you know, filling it in. But yeah, you can do all different types of things to your bags. Um, I will be tie-dyeing some of them, so stay tuned for that video. But yeah, exciting, let's go try it on. Okay 
guys, thank you so, so much for watching this. I really hope you enjoyed this as much as I did making them. Like, I honestly spent this whole week just making all of these, and it was so relaxing and fun, and I was like, I literally am going to use every single product. Like, I am so excited. I've already washed my clothes with the dryer balls. I'm, I've already used the makeup wipes. I've, like, I already know what the sponge is like. Like, I'm just so happy. That I have so many more like eco sustainable products in my house that I literally made. It's so great. And also, like the makeup pads make so many, the produce bags make so many. So, I'm giving them to my friends and family too. And then they can be more sustainable and it all goes around in a circle and it's just so good. So, if you guys even want gift ideas, that's some gifts right here. But, anyways. Please comment your favorite DIY. I want to know what one you guys like or which one you guys actually make. I would love to know. You can also DM me on Instagram, send me pictures. I would love to see them. But yeah, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Have a great day. Bye.